Last night after the show, as the audience left the old Vic, a gaggle of thespians in the pit bar congregated fast and thick. Hello, lovely. <laughs> Their challenge to conceive and perform six plays from scratch. Half a dozen plots the writers must hatch. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, our Kev took the spot, offering words of gentle encouragement. Uh, first of all, not. happy Halloween. <laughs> and if you think you're scared tonight, wait till tomorrow night. <laughs> I always say on this particular night that at one point during the course of the next 24 hours, one of you or all of you will be on the phone to your agent saying, get me the fuck out of this. But it is a temporary feeling. And as I remember saying to Brian Cox at about 7.15 three years ago, when he was with his script crumpled in his hand, 7.15 before we started the 7.30 performance and his play was the first up, screaming at me backstage, they've written me fucking speeches! <laughs> fucking speeches! Speeches. I said, well, Brian, you have to understand that this process is one where the audience is really up for it and they want a little blood on the floor. And if it happens to be yours, too bad. <laughs> and he went on and did great. Uh, he oddly hasn't come back, though, strangely enough. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first year that our host has actually been here tonight for the meet and greet. Graham Norton, thank you so much for coming and doing this tonight. If I'd known that, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Angus. I'm a director. Each man and woman revealed their skills and then their prop. As ever, it was an eclectic crop. Uh, I brought this because I thought it would be vaguely amusing, but in fact, already 15 people have come up and injured themselves on it, so I'm <laughs> having doubt. It, it is, uh, it's, it's, what? It's a wooden porcupine. porcupine. What is it? It's a tennis racket. Um, I did this two years ago. I, I can only explain. I said to Kate, I think it must be like childbirth or something. At some weak moment, somebody persuades you it's a good idea to do that. <laughs> um, But this year, I've, I've been seconded into writing something, which is quite strange, because I wrote one play, which is really, really good, but it took me years. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was given this by my loving father for my birthday this year. <laughs> Imagine my delight when I opened a beautiful, big, very beautifully wrapped box and found this inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, my special skill or skills, I can do a bit of juggling and I can keep very still and silent for exactly 10 minutes. <laughs> no special skills other than an Indian accent. <laughs> If you really want to be interesting and use that, huh? I've brought a, uh, a, a maiming kit for whoever you put that in their hands. And uh, obviously I'm up for taking the beard and all the hair off uh, at some stage. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't, In fact, I didn't know you had to bring a rock, but I do happen to have in my pocket what is um, it? Uh, a poo bag. Uh, <laughs> So, should nerves overcome you, I'll be in the wings. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how handy that will come in. <laughs> so I haven't shot anyone for a while on stage, so it's about time I did it again. I have a skill which I've always thought was useful, but nobody else thought or thinks is useful, which is that I speak Danish, and I would love to speak Danish, <laughs> in public. Because um, my prop is a bossa nova trio that I met at a party. And they can't be here tonight. This is the um, uh, Meisterbase page. There's three of them. They're terrific. I think we've got some music. for train spotters um, and uh, he's called Thomas and like me he hopes he doesn't let himself down <laughs> Andrew Scott and Anna Maxwell 
to the Westbury Hotel, the writers then did repair. To divvy out the love is no time for despair. In luxury suites, the creatives waited for muses to arrive, doing their best not to panic, go manic or skive. How's it going? It's going all right. I haven't done much yet. I'm just mesmerised by this amazing room. It's like the most expensive room I've ever been in. I don't feel like I'm going to use it. Um, all I'm going to use is this bit, but they've got an amazing sofa, um, this amazing bedroom. It's like the comfiest, softest thing I will ever sit on, <laughs> but I'm just stuck in that chair. That's your inspiration. Yes, my inspiration. I couldn't possibly stop drinking because then I would have a rip-roaring he headache. Uh, these are my cast. It's good to be able to look at people and go, what would he say? And then he says this, and then he says that. I don't know, really. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm at that point where it feels like an impossible task. I'm tempted to... Um, do a runner. Do a runner? Yeah. <laughs> Just, just leave the hotel. Just be not be here. Yeah, I'm just wondering how bad, what damage there would be to my <laughs> reputation if I just wasn't here. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not shirking there. Yeah, it's all there. It's probably going to have to come down considerably. But um, it was an argument with the production team in the car over whether someone could type this up for me or not right. that inspired me to the actual idea for the play. Dawn. With autumn leaves dropping all around, the actors return, confidence beginning to rebound. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> I've got to bed like two o'clock, like a little excited kid, and just couldn't get to sleep. You couldn't sleep because, because you're excited. Because I was excited. Good morning, everybody. So the plays have been delivered. Pencil by David Nichols. Never have agreed to have done this. <laughs> by Ol Parker, Art Malik, Anna Chancellor. And you are rehearsing downstairs here. Through the day, the intrepid army does advance, casting fate to the wind and reputation to chance. There is a man under our rickshaw. Yeah, I would. So what you're doing, but just like that, instead of like that. How's it going? If I only knew. <laughs> now, it's been a strange reverse progression in that last night I arrived, had two or three glasses of wine, felt miraculously calm. Other people were saying they were a bit jumpy, or a couple of people were. And now, ten hours on, a jumpier state has evolved. <laughs> Um, it's going all right. There's certain words that seem to be escaping me, big sort of character words that she repeats quite a lot, um, which is a bit worrying. And I think there's a weird stage of you get to a certain point in the day and you think, brilliant, I've learned my lines really well. And then suddenly, one by one, they start disappearing. Out of my way! Let him write it down! But yeah, it's quarter past four now and I wish I was watching X Factor. Yes. Just tell me how how's it going? How do you feel? <laughs> well, I feel brain dead. <laughs> and that's about it. We're on last, so yeah. thanks for that. Mm. <laughs> so the right things. Come on. Great. Amazing. Not scared at all. It was all going so well at lunchtime and now it's going to be a disaster and we're all going to be finished in oh, this town. A sense of how you're feeling right now. Really, really worried that I'm not going to remember anything. That's all. But that's just a minor worry. <laughs> <laughs> the clock counts down. It approaches now. So you, audience in balcony box and stalls, be kind. Those about to take the stage have, compared to you, by far, the bigger balls. Thank <laughs> you.